you'll need 14 to 16 French gauge nasogastric tubing, water soluble lubricant jelly, catheter tip syringe, a suction drainage system, and hypoallergenic tape. Also ready, a glass of water with a drinking straw and within easy reach of the patient, a towel, tissues, and the emesis basin. Our patient is placed in high Fowler's position with shoulders well elevated. We gauge the length of tube to be inserted by measuring from the tip of the nose to the earlobe to the ziphoid process. Mark the length of tube to be inserted with a bit of tape. We can create a gentle curve in the pliable tubing by winding four to six inches of tube tightly around the index finger. Then lubricate the end of the tube to be inserted. Three or four inches should do. Have the patient extend his neck back against the pillow and begin the insertion with that slight curve pointing down. Proceed slowly, guiding the tube along the floor of the nasal passage, aiming down toward the ear until you're just past the nasopharynx. At this stage, explain to the patient that he'll have to swallow to help the process along. With the end of the tube now just above the oropharynx, have the patient flex his head forward, take a small sip, and swallow. You'll advance the tube by an inch or two with each swallow. The patient may cough or gag if the tubing has accidentally entered the larynx. You can pause, withdraw slightly, and ease the patient with a sip of water. Be careful, there is a risk of aspiration. Advance to the measured mark and anchor the tube to the cheek while you make sure the tube is properly positioned. Your patient should be able to speak. Oh, sorry. I, I, that's, that's fine, thank you. You'll attach the distal end of the tube to the syringe. Aspirate gently to obtain gastric contents. You'll observe these are usually cloudy and greenish, but they could also be off-white, tan, bloody, or brown. Once you've verified the tube's placement, secure it with tape to the patient's nose, Clamp the end or connect it to a drainage bag or suction machine and fasten the end to the patient's gown. The head of the bed should stay at an elevation of 30 degrees to prevent reflux and to minimize irritation of the posterior pharynx. The patient should find the discomfort eases in a little while.